Derek Johnson is also joining us as well, head of the NAACP and somebody who, of course, knew Congressman Cummings. Um, and Derek, I want to read to you an op-ed today from a huge group of Cummings former staffers. And I want to read it because I think it's significant. It's a different side of Cummings. These are from the people who knew him best, who worked with him closest, who say that he insisted and I'm going to read it. We're going to say on this live shot here at the funeral. But he insisted, they write, on personally interviewing every staff member he hired so he could look into their eyes. He would ask, why are they interested in public service, how we thought we could contribute, and what motivated us? Then he would lean in and ask in his low baritone bo voice, but what feeds your soul? These staffers write that many of them left these interviews with tears in their eyes, talking about the personal connection, Derek, that Cummings made with everybody who worked in his office. His story is an American story. It's a story of perseverance. It's a story of success. It's a story that future generations should know. Uh, I like the way uh, Jonathan laid out his history. Uh, yeah. But it also shows that he is as much of an American as America, any American can be. And for him to mentor and support and challenge staff is an example of what he was doing during his tenure as Congress, in Congress, uh, holding systems accountable, ensuring that he understood the rules and that the president of this country followed the rules and overseeing a very important process in this democracy. And that is the inquiry of an, an impeachment. But many of us, we look in awe at the, at the speech of Barbara Jordan during the Nixon years. I think in the future, we will look in awe at the process and the, the example that uh, Congressman Cummings laid out for all of us. We just saw a shot of two members of Congress, two Republican members of Congress, Mark Meadows and Jim Jordan. Mark Meadows, of course, notoriously extremely close with Congressman Cummings. Congressman Cummings kind of had his back in one of these moments when he defended his friend and colleague against allegations of racism. Um, it, it's significant, and I think it's interesting, right, the two of them sitting in a row right behind Chairman Adam Schiff, right? Bitter partisan fighting on Capitol Hill unfolding, but in this church in Baltimore, Members of both parties are coming together here to honor somebody. This is the Capitol Hill that I know. I worked in government for about a decade. I worked for Congresswoman Barbara Lee. I worked alongside people who worked very closely with Elijah Cummings. And the government I know, the Capitol Hill I know, it's a family. And even if you have your disagreements in those committee hearings and in the back rooms, you can go out and have a drink and you can go out and you can break bread and you can, you know, really, uh, you can really share common purpose and common principles about our country. And I think that that friendship between Elijah Cummings and and Mark Meadows is really what that's all about. I think that's remarkable to see someone like Jim Jordan there. I think that as many Democrats, we talked about, you know, how this was a constellation of very well, well-known, notable Democrats. There's going to be just as many Republicans there in that office, uh, rather in, in that pew today. And I think that that says something also about Congressman Cummings and his legacy as well. Former presidents on their feet listening to this. Can we just take a minute, controller, and just listen in to this moment that is captivating everybody who is in Baltimore right now? It's remarkable, Jonathan, when you look at this, uh, President Obama, that shot, he's, he's singing right along mm -hmm. to, to the power that's in this room here. Um, and, and it is, Joel, you called it the, the, the all-star game, kind of, for, for the Democratic Party here. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing I want to add to jump off um, what your, your observation there, Hallie, the other part I wanted to say about Congressman Cumming is that in addition to being a fierce patriot, he's an unflinch, uh, a fierce partisan, he's an unflinching patriot. He cared about this country. He cared about the rule of law. He cared about the Constitution. And so in him, we see all of America. But I am so happy that we were able to see, show the shot of Congressman Meadows and Congressman Jordan, mm -hmm. um, because it shows that despite the differences, the parties can come together 
the people can come together. A funeral is a very human moment, yeah. a very human event. And by those two men and those two men in particular, to my mind, the fact that they are there and didn't use yesterday's ceremony at Statuary Hall to be their check the box, I've, I've done my part to honor this man, the fact that they are there Showed in up. Baltimore yeah. in that Baptist church is a wonderful thing. Also, you know, and I'll be quick here because I know that uh, Secretary yeah. Clinton's coming up. He is a, one of the most notable CBC members, Congressional Black Caucus members, we've ever seen. Not just because of what he meant to the black community, but the bridge that he built to members, and not just in his caucus, but on the other the side entire, of the aisle. Uh, yeah. uh, on the other side of the aisle, really being a bridge to some younger CBC members, and really being the bridge to a new generation of CBC members. I think that shouldn't be unsaid as well. Derek, I want you to jump in quickly, knowing that I may have to interrupt you once we see Secretary Hillary Clinton take the stage uh, in just, I think, about 30 seconds here. Yeah, you know, the, the, what an appropriate song. Uh, C.C. Winans, uh, you know, after you've done all you can, you just stand. In this time of, of, of loss of civility, uh, Congressman uh, Cummins, he represented a civil patriot who stood up for the rights of individuals and for this democracy, uh, despite many around him who simply uh, worked to erode civility in Congress. And, but after he did all he could, he continued to stand to ensure that this democracy represent all of us and that we had a government that will be accountable. And his life testament is that after he's done all he could, he stood strong for this country.